So with that interview done and over with, uh, again, thank you for to, to Mr. Bouncing Bagrov for giving me that interview and just kind of talking for a while on you know his thoughts on all that, even though there wasn't much to really talk about. Um, well, I do agree, though, that ecologists are probably the most well-off faction on the server so far, compared to loners, even. Uh, they have plenty of good role play. They do vendor RP just enough, and they're still exciting and fun to interact with. Now, of course, that isn't the case for every faction. As this next segment, again, will be a bit more of a serious one compared to the rest of this video. Uh, but since Theo wasn't really around to do the interview today, as I would have hoped, I do want to get this in there and possibly ask him these questions if he's even watching this currently and get his takes on a few things. Again, this is more of a serious commentary on Stalker Beyond. So if you're not really cool with that or you just kind of want to enjoy the shit posting, now would be the time to click off the video. Thank you for the mid-roll ads and continue to have a good day. So these opinions and genuine things that I completely agree with in some areas uh, come from a very good friend of mine who's currently in duty. And I'm sure as most of you are aware, duty right now is not exactly in a great place. But I don't think any faction is currently in a great place. Um, again, this comes from a very good friend of mine, and a lot of his takes are not only very valid, but very, very accurate. Um, so I would like to kind of give disclaimer here again, that this is very serious and this mostly pertains to the duty faction. If you are a member of a faction that you believe you agree with some of these and you even have your own takes on them, I would love to kind of hear from you and talk to you about this. If you even want an interview, I'd be happy to do it. Uh, especially those either outside of duty in different factions such as Freedom, Ecologist, or even some of the traders, uh, do let me know, and we'll be able to talk about them. Uh, we're going to be starting this next segment in three, two, one. So one of the first points that my friend really wanted to bring up uh, is he feels that the admins and developers of the server are way too focused on how the server looks instead of how it plays. There hasn't really been any gameplay updates other than slight inertia changes and minimal gunplay changes, such as ammunition changes. Everything feels too fast paced. And I honestly kind of agree with this. And he says, quote, it feels like a PVE server that's RP encouraged instead of an RP server. And I do agree with this. I personally am a big fan of the fast paced gameplay. But since the gameplay loop is so tiny right now, it feels like you reach end game incredibly quickly. While I don't mind this and I kind of like the economy and how it feels. I do agree that some gameplay aspects to kind of slow down gameplay as it was intended isn't working the way it was initially meant to be done. Um, the second part that he wants to kind of talk on is the new armbands. Of course, I completely agree on some of these points, but I do agree that, you know, it's meant to let make things more identifiable. But his points are as follows. The new armbands look ridiculous. There was absolutely zero point in adding them to the server, and I disagree with this because, if, again, I feel like it's um, it was important to kind of have this way to identify without needing to look through binoculars for, like, I don't know, five minutes to try and see someone's fucking armband or patch. Uh, and if people complain about, oh, I can't see who it is, then too bad. The armbands ruin the fun of sneaking around to identify people. Now, when you see those bright ass pool arm floaties from 150 meters out, you already know how to act instead of it being a natural interaction of walking up on an opposing faction and realize, oh, shit, it's freedom. Kill them. And again, I agree with this. While the on one hand, the armbands make combat a lot better in more less confusing it also you know makes sure that you don't fucking tk your buddy because they were wearing some military style clothes i also agree that it makes it too easy to identify other factions it makes it way too easy to be able to say oh shit that's military koid them with no interaction from like fucking 50 100 meters away completely it makes perfect sense and his third point is that the gunplay is way too basic Nobody IRL can move and shoot accurately, and I agree with this. Uh, on here, the second you get into a gunfight, it's already over because every weapon is a laser beam. Now, while I am very aware currently that there are gunplay changes being done in terms of recoil and how they feel and how they're meant to be played, I do also agree with this, though I really hope it doesn't devolve into what Stalker 2013 has with if you move one step to the right, your fucking gun is everywhere on your screen. But I do agree that it's, it's way too accurate in some areas. Um, and one more thing he wants to put is, and this is one of the more hot takes, so I will be giving this in a different segment so I can make sure I get all of my own thoughts out too. As it stands, every faction needs to be wiped. There are way too many PvP monkeys in the factions and not enough actual roleplay players, which I honestly kind of agree with. Now, keep in mind that this is also coming from a guy, this guy, my friend here, who's in duty, 
has 7,000 hours on Daisy alone. And he specialized in PvP servers by themselves. On Stalker 2013, he used to wipe monolith factions or monolith uh, death squads, upwards of 12 members, with a Vichaz SMG in 9x19. He loves SMGs. And yet, he was able to wipe monolith squads like it was fucking nothing. Imagine trying to play against that, which he will continue on here. Um, you need to have players that try their asses off and still get shit on. That way, when an engagement is won, everyone feels rewarded and ecstatic instead of, oh, yay, we won, let's grab loot and go home. In my opinion, um, I feel as if this, this is also pretty accurate. It feels like a Tarkov raid whenever you go out. Like, sometimes I'll go over to AW, kill a Chimera, and then come back and then do it all again in, like, 30 minutes. It feels about the same as a Tarkov raid. And on the stance of factions and people who are really good at PvP, or at least PvP monkeys, as he says, is that when they go out and they fight other squads, it just feels like a Tarkov raid. They kill them, they loot, they go home. It doesn't feel like there's any substance to it. For factions, you need to have the kind of players who are okay with dying. For example, Saldat Yakartina. I believe her name is also Fox, or she goes by that. She is in no way, shape, or form a PvP god like the legendary stalker John Anorak is, but she's dedicated to giving excellent roleplay to loners who visit Prostock. When she wins a gunfight with the loners she's taking out on patrol, all you hear is, holy shit, we shit on them. That's the kind of reaction you need for faction members so they stay engaged and active on a server. And continuing off of what he says here, I completely agree with that. Um, just winning engagements like it's a fucking trivial thing isn't fun for a faction member when sometimes that's all they can do is just go out and fight other factions or go kill a chimera or something like that. It just doesn't feel as exhilarating. It doesn't feel as rewarding when you have players who are, can just wipe squads. Again, my friend here in duty, his first four hours on the server, he brought 15 bandit and fat and uh, freedom patches to duty in four hours of being on the server. This was on off hours at like 3 a.m. That alone is pretty fucking nuts. Imagine having that on a squad going out to just do simple shit. Again, this should not single out these players. It shouldn't mean that they should be gatekept from being in factions because they are PvP gods. Again, my buddy is a great role player. I've role played with him before. I went on a I went on a patrol when duty with him. And he was fantastic to role play with. It felt great. But on the other hand, you have some certain players that I won't really mention that just kind of feel like they're just there to fight in PvP instead of role play sometimes. But I mean, that's just my own opinion. I couldn't even name names, really. But I have kind of seen that mentality. And he continues saying that factions should not be wiping loners. It's the purest form of gear RP I've ever seen on any RP server I've played. Bandits definitely do it the worst. Pocket wiping loners, robbing and killing loners, walking through garbage from rookie every day is ridiculous. And I know why. It's because there's nothing to do other than rob and kill people. The server has no story to it. It's an RP server that's PvP focused as it currently stands right now. And my friend continues on by saying that he's been keeping these takes because many people have complained about the same things that he has and has been told, we're not doing that. And then guess what happens? The server loses players because nothing changes. From what he can see, it feels like staff cares more for how the server looks than how it plays. Bottom line. Adding all these new suits, gear, armbands, and new everything instead of just tweaking the shit they already have, it feels like it's more work than it should be. And by all means, by stopping this kind of behavior, it'd be less work for the admins and devs as well. And that's why nearly every single one is either LOA or completely inactive. There's too much shit being added and not enough shit being changed. And I also agree with this. While it's good to have brand new content to keep things rolling, there's also tons of stuff in the gameplay loop that definitely needs to change to kind of keep things feeling fresh without just adding new stuff. Once you add the Darkscape Mines, for example, all that will really change is that, oh, people have a new place to power farm with their buddies. Oh, yeah, like, patrols will be able to go to these dark skate mines instead of out to AW or the airfield to kill a chimera. Or just even just get stuff. It feels like now, more than ever, 
there's a lot of stuff that is needs work that hasn't really been worked on or doesn't feel like it's being worked on. Like, for example, guns. We know they're being worked on, but it just doesn't feel like they are. There's a lot of things in the gameplay loop that doesn't feel like they are. And of course, I myself, I believe that these are going to be worked on eventually. But right now, that's the biggest reason that there's been a ton of exodus from duty, uh, from just leaving the server, just going on LOA. My buddy who just talked to me here, uh, he hasn't played in like a week and it has stopped playing entirely because of the new armbands because it just doesn't feel good. It feels gamey. And I agree with that. Um, a few more points here that is going to get into. With the absence of Duty leadership, Duty no longer has the ability to further their storylines with other factions. Creating storylines for loners as a faction-based server is hard to do as every faction is at war with each other. I feel as if every faction is too caught up in each other's business to even pay mind to the loners around them. And I also agree with this. Sometimes I feel like there's more patrols out to go kill freedom and ambush their compound than there is to just do shit with loners. Um, it feels like there's just way too much. It feels like I'm playing warfare mode on fucking Anomaly or Gamma, which cardinal sin for mentioning it, mind you. But that's what it feels like sometimes. I feel like there's way too much faction conflict and not enough loner interaction to really be given much. Every time I see someone at the duty gates, it's just to give mutant parts or ask if they're going on an expedition sometime soon. If they're going to Truck Cemetery, if they're going to AW, if they're going to Airfield, if they're going to Dead City, going to Novo, it's the same thing every time. There's no variety in these things. So that's about all the stuff. Oh, yeah, there's more. Uh, as it stands for me, this reason I've slowly stopped playing is due to burnout. Duty for me isn't all that fun as all we can do is fight freedom or hunt mutants. There's not really any storyline being pushed for the individual factions and nearly none at all for duty from what I've seen in the past two weeks I've been in here. I would enjoy duty more if the GMs would respond to us in our faction chats when we ask them for an event for our loners. But as I've seen, not one GM has replied for nearly three weeks. It's boring. This is concerning to me. While on one hand, I, I completely understand. Let's get something straight real fast. I completely understand, I completely understand that GMs have lives. These people have lives and need to do things. And I get that they can't constantly do stuff for factions and individuals and all that fun stuff. They can't work with traders and factions and individual loners to do events all the time. However, three weeks is a lot of time. Um, back when I was a uh, admin or rather a, an event director on a Project Zomboid server, I would spend nothing but my entire day just going to individual people around the map and giving them stuff to do and giving them RP interaction. And that can't be done here because people aren't me. I, I didn't have a life back then. I didn't have anything to do. I didn't really even have a job back then. Or even, no, when I did have a job, I still did it because I'm fucking autistic. But what really gets to me is that sometimes it feels like there's nothing really going on. There's no story being developed. And as he mentions, it's just a rp server with a lot of pvp centric it feels like sometimes when i go out and do stuff i'm doing stuff for the gameplay mechanics and the rubles rather than for a story and that's why i haven't played in some time apart from some personal issues and personal matters that you know completely out of character but i feel like that's probably the end of this segment now finally but um i hope that maybe something was gathered from this or maybe something can be talked about in a civil manner civil manner compared to the floaties incident as of last night uh as of time of recording anyway so um i feel like there's gonna be more to talk about here in a second here but that's all i have for this current section uh coming up next either more yapping or the end of the video stay tuned so if you've gotten this far in the video thank you i'm glad that you were able to enjoy the amount of shit posting that happened earlier and the amount of yapping that's happened just now of course, these are all very genuine points from me and my good friend who has given me some of these points that I was able to talk about today. And of course, I'm very glad I was able to get a lot of this stuff out. Uh, and can I voice my opinion instead of just make a shit pose video on why Stalker Beyond has fallen? Um, so again, I really hope you enjoyed this. I hope that maybe if any admins are listening to this or maybe this could spark a good discussion and a way to reform things or a way to think, make things better. Maybe this will spark a discussion in faction channels, in faction chats about how to make things better for loners, how to make things better entirely for everyone. Um, but apart from that, that's about all I have. 
Um, Yap session over for now. Uh, oh, yes. One more thing. Uh, if I don't get Trader, everything's going to fucking fall apart. You know? Uh, me not getting Trader is like the Industrial Revolution and its consequences, you know? That's what it is. Like, Stalker Beyond and its consequences is exactly why I haven't gotten Trader yet. And if I get it, everything's fixed, you know? Everything just magically fixes itself because I'm just that good. But apart from that, again, yep, session over. Thank you very much for watching this far. I apologize for ruining your day or mostly doing so by yapping so much. But I hope you guys take care of yourselves. And I hope, again, that this sparks some kind of insightful discussion that doesn't end in a massive uh, a massive talk from Theo trying to get us to shut the fuck up. So, again, thank you very much. And I'll see you in the zone.